<clears throat> Everything is great. And they're living for God and nothing's shaking their world. And all of a sudden, she sees something in the tree she's never seen before. And, of course, she don't touch that tree because God had said don't touch those two trees in the middle of the garden. Remember, one was a tree of life. One was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so she walked up to the tree of life and she looked at it. And then she walked over and she thought, probably thought within herself, I wonder why God don't want us to mess with this. But then she walked over to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she didn't have knowledge of evil. They did not, you gotta understand, they did not know what evil was. They did not know what sin was. They had never experienced it. Well, wouldn't it be great if you were just born in this world with the Holy Ghost and you never had to experience sin? There you go. Unfortunately, it ain't that way. Hallelujah. Amen. We're all born in sin. We're shaping in iniquity. Amen. And we come into this world, amen, with a sinful nature. Now, what you do with that sinful nature is up to you. It's not up to God. It's up to you what you do with that sinful nature. Now, you can resist it. Amen. Hallelujah. Or you can yield to it. Now, may I say this morning, almost 100% of the folks yield to it. Hallelujah. Most of us came out of that world because we were in sin. Amen. We had, we had yielded to the sinful nature. And we were there. We were, we were filled with sin. That sin nature had erupted in us just like it did in Eve that day. Amen. That sin nature was there. She did not know that she had a sin nature. But all of a sudden, this little imp begins to talk to her in the tree and said, Oh, you need to look at this. You really need to stop and look at this. How many times have you been going along living for God? You're doing great, man. And all of a sudden, this thought enters your mind. You need to stop and listen. You need to look at this. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Hallelujah. That ain't what I need to listen to. But that voice is so persistent. He didn't give up when she said no. He just kept on pushing. You know, this, this fruit here, God knows if you eat of this fruit, you're going to be as sharp as he is. You're going to be a God. You're going to be just like God is. Well, hello. Come on, this is kind of like those people that get other people convinced that if they blow themselves up and kill Americans that, you know, you're going to go to heaven. All those people that are doing the convention never have strapped on a bomb. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so Satan up in this tree, he has never himself experienced this. And he's telling her, listen, you need to do this. You know, you just need to partake of this tree because you're going to be as brilliant as God is. That's why they call it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because only God knows what good and evil is. Amen. You don't know. All you know is good. You ain't never experienced evil in your life. You would have no idea what it was. Wouldn't you like to know what evil is? No. <laughs> there you go. And so with a little car salesmanship, he talks her into it. Amen. And that's where car salesmen come from. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just joking. I know some good ones. But, but, but what happens to it now? Here he is. Amen. He has convinced Eve to take of this fruit. And, and she, she looks at it. And she's thinking, ah, there is no way God has said that if we eat of this fruit, that that day death will come into our life. Not that they were going to die a physical death that day, but there would be a spiritual death. I mean, they did not even know the term spirituality. They had no clue that they were spiritual beings. All they knew was they were just happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you know. Just running around the garden all day, eating fruit and petting the tigers and lions and having a good time. Amen. Going fishing. Just enjoying life and, and nothing going on in their life. They didn't have to worry about anything at all. And all of a sudden, sin factor begins to step in. Amen. I want you to notice, though, it was not the devil. He didn't pull the fruit off the tree and say, here, eat it. If you don't eat this, I'm going to choke you to death. He, he couldn't do that. He, he didn't have that authority. 
Amen. So, so what happened is he had to convince her, amen, to establish a sin nature. She didn't have a sin nature. But he had to convince that flesh to create that sin nature. Amen. So sin, that sin nature is a creation of our own being. Mm. Now, let me bring that back around to now. Hallelujah. When you have problems, when you have sin in your life, when you have things you just can't seem to overcome, it's because you have created a sin nature in your own life. You generated that the first time you uh, lit up a cigarette, the first time you took a drink out of a bottle, the first time you said a curse word, the first time you watched something you shouldn't have been watching. I mean, you know what you did? You generated a sin nature in yourself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And from that, oh, you were born in sin. You were shaping in iniquity. But every one of us in here has the ability to be a murderer. Amen. A rapist. You know, we have the ability to be uh, somebody that steals. Amen. We have the ability to be somebody that that uh, just has a, has a horrible uh, attitude. We all have that ability within us. But I want you to understand this morning that with that ability, it came because the sin nature you invited within yourself is when the sin actually entered in. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you, you said, you know what? I really like that. I, you know, I, I've never tried that before. I think I'm going to try it one time. And you tried it one time and your sin nature took over and you said, wow, that's pretty neat. I like that. And then the confrontation came when you came to the altar and, and, and somebody was preaching and the word of God was reaching you and it got in your soul and it began to tangle with you and, and your sin nature began to wrestle, amen, with that spiritual man. And before you know it, all of a sudden you're falling in an altar and you're saying, God, forgive me of that sin. Cleanse me. Make me a new creature. And God said, all right, I'll do it. And so he sets you free from the sin nature. Amen. He, or from the law of sin and death. You're no longer bound by the law of sin and death at that time. But here's the problem. The problem is, amen, if you don't do what David did, amen, you'll continue to have to deal with it. Hallelujah. How, how, what am I doing? I'm leaving you up here to show you, amen, what God wants us to do as far as how to get rid of death in our life. We're talking about spiritual death. Amen. You see, David had been told, and that was one of the commandments that had been given, you can't number Israel. You don't ever want to do that. You don't want, and, and you know why? Because God wanted David to know that everything that happened militarily, amen, was not because of him or his power or the size of his army, but that it was God. Okay? And so David began, and he said, you know, uh, and of course, if you read the word, what I read in you here in a while ago, the first scripture said that God sent this spirit to David, amen, because God was mad at Israel. God wanted a reason to take them out. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty scary. Isn't it? I mean, I hope God doesn't get mad enough at me that He wants a reason to take me out. But He wanted a reason to take him out, and so He He put the Spirit in David, and David said, "I want you to number Israel, and uh, I want you to go count, see how many valiant men we got." It was against what God had said. Amen. So what was He doing? He was yielding, surrendering. To that sin nature that was there. Wait a minute, how is that a sin? Just counting the people. Because it's against what God said not to do. Hallelujah. God said, don't do it. And now David's doing it. That's as simple as sin gets. God said, don't, and you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I know that people justify themselves, they justify what they do because they say, it's not in the word. There's nothing in the Word that said, I can't smoke crack cocaine. I've looked and I hadn't found it. Amen. There's nothing in the world, in the Word, that says, I can't drink Jack Daniels. Not a word in there does it say that. I hadn't seen Jack Daniels in the Bible anywhere. Have you? Okay, I didn't think so. I was hoping I wasn't missing something. 
But in his word, he gives principles. Hallelujah. Amen. When that word was written, Jack Daniels didn't exist in the name of Jack Daniels. It did exist, but it wasn't called Jack Daniels. You probably called it Hooch or something else. Amen. But, but, but you understand this morning, what I'm trying to tell you is, amen, the word lays principles out for us. And, and if we go against the principles that God has laid out in the foundation of his word, once we have crossed that line, we have entered our sin nature again. We went back and we picked up, amen, you, you understand there was a law of sin and death that dwelt in your members, your body, in other words. There, there's a law of sin and death that dwells in your body, amen, and, and, and that sin nature is there, it's lying dormant, amen, because you got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost keeps it subdued and keeps it down, amen. But Paul said, the things that I don't want to do are the things that I find myself doing. this thing. I'm dealing with that sin nature. It's trying to rise back up. And what it's doing is it's causing me to get back in that scenario with God where now I'm dying. All right. So what, what, what's happening here is it's not the devil any longer. Now it's you and God. As soon as Eve took of that fruit it was no longer her in that spirit of hell that was in that tree it was her and god now because when she took of that fruit that sin nature in her generated itself and now she could sin willfully hello she couldn't willfully sin before then but once she participated in it that sin nature entered into her and from then on she could willfully sin she goes and takes it out and says you got to try some of this Notice how sin does. Amen. Sin is one of those things that spreads pretty easy, pretty quick. Amen. He didn't hesitate. He took a bite of it and said, that's pretty good stuff. Where'd you get that? <laughs> well, off the trio. No, it's good. Oh. <sighs> because your sin nature is there lying dormant until you open it up. And when you do that, that you would not, all of a sudden now, it's between you and God. There, there's an issue here. You understand what I'm saying? There's an issue here that's going on. Now it's between you and God, and, and you've got to deal with it, amen, with God. It, it's no, there's no demon involved now. It's you and God. You're the one messing up. It's not the demon pushing you. It's not the demon saying, hey, you got to keep on. Now you've partaken of it. Now it's on your shoulders. Amen. You can get rid of it as quick as you took it. Hallelujah. But we don't. Many times there's a tendency, like I said a while ago, about great men that I've known throughout the years who serve God and who I, I idolized and thought, my God, there's no way in, he in heaven that, that anybody is going to mess with those. Uh, those guys have got it together. And now, if you could see them, they've got their beards and mustaches and they're preaching in some charismatic church, uh, some false doctor. They'll baptize you whatever way you want to be baptized. Uh, they'll go to the bar and have a drink with you uh, and then preach in your pulpit the next morning. Listen, friend, uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, amen, that that sin nature uh, is more powerful uh, than you've ever realized. Uh, amen. It's trying to take you to death. Uh, amen. It's trying to kill you. Uh, it's trying to destroy your spiritual man. Uh, and as it begins to progress, uh, as it begins to destroy you, uh, as it begins to take a little more out of you every single day, uh, you'll find yourself attaching to people uh, that you really uh, never should have attached to in the first place. Uh, oh, but they're my friends. You don't understand. I don't care. Uh, amen. The thing is, uh, it's a sin nature at work. It's leading you to death. That's it. Amen. So what happens now? David, what's going on? All these thousands of people have died because of my sin. There's death in the camp. 
And so he's up by the threshing floor, or on the threshing floor, and there he sees the death angel. It's headed to Jerusalem, and the Lord said, hold on just a minute. I've got something here. Hold on just a minute. Something's working in my servant David. Hold on. Don't you go any further. You just stop where you're at. And the Bible said that David was up by that threshing floor, and there he spotted and he saw that angel of death. God allowed him to see that angel, and I think God allowed it for a reason, because he recognized the fact that there was only one way that he was going to be able to stop that thing. Hey, uh, come on, church. Amen. There's only one way that you can stop. Amen. That death nature in you. There's only one. Oh, come on. There's only one way that you're going to be able to overcome and to curtail that spirit that's in you. Amen. It's not a spirit of hell. It's a spirit of your stinking flesh that keeps saying David's sin of his own accord. And now he sees the death angel. I don't know if you've ever seen one of them or not. I've seen them. They're pretty big. Pretty bold. And uh, the Bible said he went to the preacher. Preacher said, you need to make a sacrifice. We, we don't like the word sacrifice because the word sacrifice means something has got to die. Let me just say this. If you don't kill something, it's going to kill you. Hallelujah. I said, if you don't make the sacrifice, then death is going to take over. And it's going to kill you, not only spiritually, but eventually physically. Amen? And so, here we are. David, what are you doing? I uh, run. I, I want to buy this threshing floor. Uh, what, what do you want it for? I, I'm going to build an altar to God. And, and Ron said, no, 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 no. No, uh -uh. you're the king. Everything you need, you got. Look, here's the oxen for the sacrifice. So let's build this altar, and, and here's the instruments instruments that I used in my farming, and, and you can take those and burn them on the altar for wood and put the oxen on there and, and make your sacrifice. You you, you just go ahead. It, it, no, no, no. I, it ain't going to cost you one thing. You're the king. And, and the king said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm not coming to you from the point of a king. I'm coming to you to the point from the point of an individual who is hurting. I'm coming to, to you from the point of an individual who's in need because I've got a sin nature. I've got to overcome. I'm not coming as the king. I'm coming as somebody. Amen. Who's, who's dealing with sin? I'm coming with some I'm coming as somebody who's got a problem. Don't you understand? David was considered a man after God's own heart. He was a man that God chose him and placed him in his position. But now he's placed himself in a position between him and God. And so here he is at the threshing floor and he pays good money for the oxen and the threshing floor and then he takes that oxen and he, he, he builds that altar and he makes that sacrifice and when he makes that sacrifice the Bible said that's the day that death died <laughs> hallelujah that's the day that death died <laughs> amen that's the day that the plague was stayed hallelujah somebody in my hearing this morning needs to understand me amen that there's a death sentence in you you're, you're generating it of yourself I said you're, it's your own making nobody has convinced you you've convinced yourself that it's alright to do the things you're doing and you're still saved I've got news for you friend amen you've continued in your sin and because of that, amen, that sin nature has now become second nature to you, and you, you can't seem to overcome it, and the reason
reason being is you like it too much. But I'm here to tell you this morning, amen, if you don't kill it, it's going to kill you. Oh, come on, church. Amen. What we got to do, we 